The U.S. controls more ocean than any other country, um, and yet about 90% of the seafood we eat is imported from abroad, and about one-third of the food that we catch is sold outside the U.S. market. I'm wondering, can you just speak on these numbers? Yeah, uh, there's a global market in seafood, and so seafood is produced and consumed all around the world and traded freely all around the world. And so uh, in some ways it's not surprising that the U.S. happens to be one of the wealthy countries that consumes seafood that it imports from other places. We're not the only one like this. Uh, we do have an active wild capture fishery in the United States and we do have some aquaculture here but not nearly as much as we could uh, given how much ocean space we have and the technology that we have. And so um, I think the main reason for that is that we've been able to import the seafood we want inexpensively from other places. And we have preferred as a nation to use our coastal waters for recreation and for aesthetic uses, uh, as well as wild fisheries and sport fisheries instead of making food production through aquaculture a priority. And that's a choice that we've made, more or less, uh, uh, intentionally or unintentionally, that's the way it's worked out. I think it's possible that that could change in the future. Um, and in some ways, I think it'd be good if it did. Uh, but for the time being, the reality is that we import most of the seafood we consume. Now, is most of the seafood that we import farmed, or is it most, or mostly wild? More than half of it is farmed today. And uh, for several decades now, if you look at global seafood production, the amount of production from wild fisheries has been stable or even declining slightly because most of the world's wild fish stocks are either fully exploited or overexploited, and there's just no way to produce more of that. So the increased demand for seafood that comes with a growing and increasingly wealthy population uh, has been met by farming, by aquaculture. And that's true for the seafood the U.S. imports as well. What are maybe some of the difficulties or issues with finfish aquaculture in particularly, and then such as like a disease, and how do we handle that? So just like any kind of farming, uh, finfish aquaculture can be done in an ecologically sound way and it can be done in unsound ways. It's no different from growing chickens or pigs or beef that way. Some of the issues with finfish aquaculture historically have uh, had to do with disease management. Anytime you have a lot of animals in a closely confined space, you have to be very careful to keep them healthy and any kind of disease outbreak not only can very quickly destroy your crop, so to speak, but it can spread to other organisms potentially in the marine environment. Other issues historically have been the uh, excessive use of antibiotics in the early days of the salmon industry, for example. Antibiotics were used very heavily to control disease and parasites. This is uh, not necessary any longer because we have ways now of vaccinating the fish uh, that have reduced the need for antibiotic application dramatically. Another problem is the um, reliance on capture fisheries for the ingredients to the feed. So salmon are carnivorous and in their diet they need the kinds of uh, constituents that come in f other fish, their natural diet fish and shellfish. And so historically, the feed industry has used anchoveta and other capture fisheries to uh, provide the fish meal and fish oil that goes into the diet of these fish. And that limits global production because there's only so much of these wild capture fisheries that we can harvest sustainably. And so the solution to this is to find plant-based substitutes for those ingredients. And the global aquaculture feed industry has been working on this for a long time. And I expect that in the next 
five to ten years we will solve that problem and reduce that constraint and uh, be able to increase output of carnivorous aquaculture fish without harming the wild stocks that we rely on for the feed now. One of our big problems with agriculture in general, especially meat production, is larger, fatter, faster concept, mostly to um, enhance capital for the farmers and the corporations that own the farms. Um, do you think we could go down that same road with fish production, and how do we avoid that? I think that um, there's a balance there that has to be struck. Wants to grow animals that are healthy, that grow quickly, uh, in order to uh, increase yield and, and uh, make the operation cost effective and profitable. And historically that's been done by selective breeding. Uh, you know, farmers forever have been selectively breeding their cows and pigs and so on to maximize their growth and, and their disease resistance. We've done the same thing with plants. Uh, we've historically done it through natural selective breeding. Uh, which is a form of, of primitive uh, genetic selection and, and uh, today we have increasingly sophisticated technology to do that kind of manipulation more actively with genetic modification of organisms and that's a controversial topic uh, obviously because sometimes there are unintended consequences and side effects and maybe health effects associated with those kind of modifications. And we need to be uh, cautious in applying those. I think that uh, that is a uh, process in which consumers play a role uh, by expressing their preferences and in which we need really good government regulation and supervision and safety monitoring in order to ensure that uh, the profit motive there doesn't outpace our understanding of what the health implications and consequences of all this are. Um, I, I am in favor of a measured approach there. I don't think it makes sense to say no genetic modification ever is okay because we do need to increase protein production around the world to feed a growing population. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think we should let it run rampant and unchecked either. And so it's a complicated topic, but I think one that collectively we can solve in a constructive way. So we know about some of the effects of climate change, such as ocean acidification and rising sea temperatures on wild populations. But how does climate change affect or not affect aquaculture systems? Yeah, it's, it's likely that climate change will lead to ecological change in the oceans. And we're seeing some of the early effects of that with uh, acidification, lowering pH levels in a lot of places, rising temperatures, changes uh, in the future possibly in primary production. Um, that is the growth of plant matter at the base of the food pyramid. Uh, lots of things could be shifting in the decades ahead and this is likely, I think, to affect the natural productivity of the oceans, the distribution and health of wild fish stocks uh, in ways that we don't yet fully understand but, but are working to try to predict. I think this is another argument for increased aquaculture because it's a lot easier to shift the production of an aquaculture species geographically as the ocean conditions change than it is to shift a wild capture fishery in ways that respond adequately to changing ecological stock dynamics and so on. So as the ocean warms in the higher latitudes, we will, for example, be able to grow more warm water fish in those waters. Um, as ocean pH changes, we may need to take steps to adapt our shellfish industry to that. Um, we've seen some initial activity like that on the west coast already, and I know the growers here on the east coast are thinking about this as well. So climate change presents lots of challenges, 
but I think that aquaculture is in many ways uh, well suited to respond to those and perhaps better in some ways than land-based food production and wild capture fisheries. So what do you think the future is for aquaculture here in America? I think um, I would like to see aquaculture production expand in the United States. I think that we have uh, rightly an expectation that the seafood we find in our markets is healthy and produced in an ecologically sound way. And I can think of no better way to encourage the rest of the world to do that than by showing them how to do it here at home. I think that um, there are legitimate concerns over the health um, and ecological implications of food production in seafood and in terrestrial food production. And I think that uh, as one of the wealthiest nations in the world with sophisticated technology and a strong science community to ensure that we do things in an ecologically sound way, we should be leading the way in that regard and uh, not just relying on other countries to grow the seafood that we want. Um, I think that we can do a lot to, to show the world how to farm seafood in an ecologically sound way. And I think we should do that.